First things first, a big thank you to Corporal's Corner, Sean Kelly, for the shout out and recommendation to his audience. And then from everybody who came over to the channel, liked, subscribed, left a comment, and then watched a couple of videos. I greatly appreciate all the support, and I'm going to continue to earn your trust and respect with every video I make. Keep your hatchet scoured. One of the first rules of Rogers Rangers, but having a sharp hatchet or a survival hatchet like this one, this S-Wing, we can affect a lot of survival priorities out here in the wild. We're gonna take Old Faithful here, the S-Wing hatchet, one of my first hatchets, along with some older items and demonstrate some survival skills and maybe some lesser known skills that you may not have heard of before and affect survival going down the seven priorities of survival out here in the bottomlands. So let's go. Now while we're out here walking around, one thing I want to show you is how to take your notebook and turn it into a compass. All right, so first thing we need to do is orient the base plate as we prepare to land navigate using a solar compass. The most important thing is to note the time. It is 11.45. It's daylight savings weekend, so technically it's 10.45 because we fall back. But the compass is already oriented in the north-south line. Now all we need to do is take the base plate, find a small stick, put it right in the center, and then rotate the base plate until we have the shadow at the correct time of 10.45. So you see the shadow here just before the 11. Here's the 10, 10.45, went about three quarters, and we should be oriented north. This arrow on my base plate indicates that this lead edge of the paper right here is the direction we're going to always travel. This lead edge is the edge we're always going to use to orient ourselves and travel. Now let's grab our compass, we'll bring it back, and you can see that we have correctly oriented our base plate north. All right, now that we have our base plate oriented with our compass out to proof, still facing north, remember the arrow is the lead edge, the direction we're always gonna travel. All I have to do now is add our drawn in compass face. And then just drop it in and then continue to ensure that the shadow of our gnomon is still at 1145. And we just rotate the compass face until north is north, and we are oriented zero degrees. Now say we wanted to go 90 degrees and travel for land navigation, we just simply rotate the compass, not the base plate, until the 90 degrees east, generally east, is underneath the shadow, and then all we have to do is rotate the entire compass until the shadow is back on the north of our compass face, and we're facing 90 degrees due east, Take out our compass to check, and it looks like we are facing east 90 degrees.
All right, so we got our shelter rug, just a simple debris lean-to, two Y-fork sticks with a cross beam, and then we've got beams on the back side to act as a roof, debris on top, and then a debris bed. Remember, four inches, compressed debris on the forest floor. Should be good enough for the night. The more, the better. Then I went ahead and dusted off this old number for you. This is the M1949 mountain sleeping bag or mummy bag. This is the first sleeping bag I ever started out with. And I remember spending many nights in the field in this thing trying to stay warm. The bad thing about this type of sleeping bag, it's water repellent, not resistant. But there is a survival tip or trick with this old M1949 sleeping bag that I want to show you. I got to bring you in close. All right, so this is the outer cover water repellent. It does have fasteners or the buttons to adhere to the other side and then close this up. But one thing this was designed to do was to take paracord and actually lace the outer covering to the mummy bag itself. So all you have to do is using one piece of lace or one piece of cord, you can go all the way down the sleeping bag. We just come up here to the head, pull out the excess or leftover that we have, and then we can simply unlace this bag to get the paracord out. Now with this cord, it's kind of a pain in the butt to lace up both sides and then to even get the cordage out is a little bit painstaking here, but it was designed to be this way, to lace up one side to that equivalent side and then the same thing for the other side. The quick release method for the zipper, you zip it all the way up, the zipper is actually facing the inside of the mummy bag so you can grab the lanyard very quickly or you simply just grab both sides of the sleeping bag and open it up as fast as you can to get out. So a few lesser known survival tips there. All right, so you saw how easy it is to use the L-shaped flashlight and use this with some lead wires to start steel wool on fire, or at least catch that current, hold it, and then blow it into flame. So I'm gonna show you a couple different ways we can use some old surplus equipment like this L-shaped flashlight and a canteen cup and a few other items to create different methods for starting fire. All right, so we have our canteen cup. We just take our char cloth, put it inside, we're gonna scoop our embers away. We need a good bed of embers or coals for this with the hot ground. Take our rock, we're gonna throw it inside. We're gonna take this whole thing, turn it upside down on the ground here, and then pile our embers back around. Some of it didn't char enough, but we've got some good pieces right here. 
with a hatchet or an axe, we always have a file to sharpen our tools in the field. And this is usually made out of high carbon steel. So we can find a piece of shirt or a hard rock, strike sparks off this file and ignite our char material in our tinder bundle and blow it into flame. There you go. Please forgive the cutout. I thought the camera was still rolling, but apparently the battery died. So the USGI Mess 10 spoon can be used for a bearing block for a bow drill kit. So the more you know. And then nowadays we have our ferro rod, handy dandy fire starting tool. Everybody's got one. This happens to be an Exotac and it's got that compartment up top for tinder that we can use to light. So we can take this even with our hatchet, if we're smart, we'll grind off the spine, get that 90 degree edge, and we can use that as a way to strike our ferro rod and get our tinder going. It's good stuff. Let's talk about sharpening a hatchet or an axe in the field. All we really need is a good file, and then I like to have a strop with a little bit of honing compound on it. Now, first thing we do is make sure that the bit is cleaned off as best as possible out here in the field. And we've got our file, we've got the coarse side, and we just go along the length of the bit, removing all the burrs or any deformities along that bit and give it a nice clean look. And then all we have to do is rotate the hatchet around, do it to the other side, same thing. It's looking pretty good. And then next step I like to do is just take the file again, and this time starting in the opposite direction, lightly pull. Lightly pull toward me. Now what we're doing here is we're removing that burr off the edge of our hatchet. And we'll do about two dozen or so strokes with the strop on each side. We could even alternate if we want. Good to go. All right, in keeping with our military theme, let's talk about signaling. Now, signaling, there are a variety of signals out there, but one that I think is incredibly important to have or something that's easy for us to have and make and then prepare and have ready as part of our kit is just a chem light with some 550 cord on it. We call this a buzz saw. All we have to do is tie 550 cord to our chem light, let it hang off, and then we can use this as a passive signal, hang it up in a tree over our camp at night to mark our location, or as an active signal, we can use this for signaling search and rescue, crack it at night, and then simply swing it in a circle toward the direction of search and rescue or the direction we want to signal. And this creates an awesome signal at nighttime that we can use in the event search and rescue is inbound. We can use this to signal them and bring them into our location for rescue. All right, old school trick is to take a soap dish like this highly visible yellow one and make that our first aid kit for everyday treatment. We've got different band-aids to treat lacerations or abrasions to our skin, tools, tweezers to pick things out of our skin or remove ticks. We've got safety pins, topical ointment like this iodine to treat wounds, gauze to clean up blood. We've got different medicines here, everything from aspirin to treat fevers and headaches to anti-diarrheal or allergy medicine, moleskin for blisters. We've got insect repellent wipes. These are always good to have. Eye drops for our eyes, super glue to super glue wounds shut, tape to hold bandages in place. We've got relief wipes for bug bites, antibiotic ointment, and then alcohol prep pads. And all of this fits into a small soap dish like this. That can be our first aid kit. Just another old school trick that we've used in the past. 
All right, well, I hope you liked this video. If you did like this video, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, leave me a comment in the comment section. I always appreciate your feedback. I wanna thank you guys for everything you do for me, for this channel, for your likes, your views, your subscriptions, your comments, your feedback, and your shares. I'll be back with another video as soon as I can, guys. Thanks. Mm -hmm.